Welcome to StarCraft II Battle Report. Hey everyone, I'm Dustin Browder. I'm the lead designer on StarCraft II. And I'm Robert Simpson, an eSports team member. And today we have Matt Cooper playing as the Red Protoss and David Kim playing as the Blue Terran on Kulos Ravine. This is an alpha version of StarCraft II, but there's a lot of new units and a lot of new abilities these players can employ against one another. Let's go to the game. Here is Matt Cooper in the lower right hand of the map playing as the Red Protoss and all the way across the map across this huge battlefield is David Kim playing as the Blue Terran. This is on Kulos Ravine. This is a new map for our alpha version of StarCraft II. You can see there's a very narrow choke point allowing access into your base and you've got this very easily defended expansion up here where you could build another town and try to gather more resources. This area is protected by these rocks. If you destroy these rocks you can get access to this area. So you see in order to even to get up to that area, you need to destroy the rocks inside your own base. We've also got all the way across the map here a regular expansion for, for each player. This will allow each player to build additional resources if they want to, but this one's much more exposed. It's easier to get to, but it's easier to get to for the enemy as well. And in the middle of the map, we've got the Zelnaga Watchtowers, which allow players to see a huge area around them if they capture the towers. These will be critical during the battle as these towers are right between both players, and capturing these towers will give both players a lot of of information about what's going on across the map and of course being a good StarCraft 2 map these areas are mirrored it is balanced you can see there is a similar position here next to the Protoss player as there was next to the Terran player and finally we've got these high yield expansions here this is a place where you get access to high yield minerals you collect additional resources for controlling that area and both players would be highly incentivized over the course of the game to try to get control of those areas but as with your expansions they're much harder to defend and so now on production we can see both the players are trying to keep up with the resources, pumping out another probe and SCV. We do see both the gateway and the barracks being built simultaneously. The Protoss and Terran player already have down at least one farm. We do see a probe and a supply depot out on the battlefield. Now that probe is scouting out just a little earlier than that SCV. They're likely going to see each other's scouts and be able to guess, uh, use their intuition to find out where the other player is. We do see the Protoss player throw down an assimilator, so we're probably going to see him going for a cybernetics core and likely warp gates. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very standard approach for the Protoss these days in the alpha version of StarCraft 2. And you can see the Terran player has, of course, spotted the probe. He sees what's going on and he's moving away. Both players are trying to find out where the other player is located. This is very important in StarCraft 2 as it was in the original StarCraft. The more information you have, the better off you're going to be over the course of a battle. And back at Matt Cooper's base, we do see that Assimilator is absolutely finished, and he's already mining from it with a total of three probes, so he's trying to get the most that he can out of that Assimilator. Now we see that Gateway hasn't started producing anything yet. He was saving up his minerals so that he can throw down that cybernetic score. He's relying on the size of the map here to protect himself. He's not building any ground troops because he knows it's a long distance from his base to the enemy base, so he's going to rely on that and hope the enemy doesn't get here anytime soon, allowing him to tech up a little bit more quickly. And the probe is able to make it over into the Terran base. We do have that Marine laying down a ton of pressure on him, and he's going to pull back that probe. Is it going to be able to regenerate its shields? I'm not sure if it's going to survive. Is the Marine going to be able to catch him? Oh, and it's looking like the t t Protoss player is moving him around. He's able to get just enough shields back to take another couple of attacks from that Marine, and he's able to outrun him and make his way into the Terran base. This is a big deal. What a great move by the Protoss player. He's inside. He's going to get to see what he needs to see right now. He wants to know what's going on inside this Terran base, and he's going to get his way. He's very cleverly maneuvered around. He's playing keep away from that marine, regenerating his shields. Shields generate much more quickly in StarCraft 2 than they did the original StarCraft and you can see that probe. Oh, its shields are almost down. It's only got a few hit points left. It is running away from that marine. It's a little bit faster and it looks like, unbelievably, that probe is going to successfully dodge that marine, scouted that entire Terran base, and get away all at the same time. Now, the Terran player, on the other hand, was able to safely get his SCB into the Protoss player's base and scout around as much as he can and now he's pulling out before too many units get out there. We do see that the Terran player is going for Marauders, which uh, is pretty bad news for the Protoss player at this point because he did just build the Stalker. Yeah, absolutely. So the Stalker is a great... Oh, and looks like that probe almost got caught again by the SCV, but it does manage to get away, and here comes the Stalker. Now, the Stalker is a very dangerous Protoss ground, and it can shoot ground and air, and of course it has an ability to blink, which allows it to teleport anywhere it wishes to go within a short distance. Now, the absolute perfect counter for this unit is the Terran Marauder. It's a heavy ground infantry unit that fires concussion missiles, does a lot of damage to armored units like the Stalker, and it's the perfect choice to deal with this mobile Protoss threat. Is that SCV going to go to... Yes, the final shot. We've got a Marauder engaging that Stalker. Both of the both the units volleying at each other at the exact same time. We see lots of damage getting laid down. Who's going to win? Is it going to be the Marauder or the Stalker? Oh, and the Marauder is just able to get off that last shot right before the Stalker was able to kill him. 
Small gain for the Terrans, but still a gain nonetheless as he takes down that Stalker that was threatening his base. We see the Terran player here is actually planning on expanding. He's got a uh, command center in production down at the very bottom of the screen. He's probably going to fly that up to that plateau just south of his base where he will be able to harvest safely. And the Protoss player may be unaware of it for quite some time unless he gets some flyers out to have a look at what's going on. Meanwhile, back in the Protoss base, because there's a lot of teching going on, a lot of resources being laid down here. Looks like he's got some more gateways on the way. He's got another simulator going down, and he's got a Twilight Council which will allow him to build immortals and allow him to detect dark templars it's really a gateway uh, for a lot of choices for the protoss allow him to build charge on his zealots allow him to move much more quickly a lot of choices coming out of that building so we're going to see what the protoss decides to do once he gets that tech in play and so here david kim has taken advantage of his ability to lift off and load a few scvs into that command center and land them right on that high ground expansion oh and the protoss player looks like has built a proxy pylon as we've come to call it uh, in this starcraft 2 alpha build where you actually build a pylon closer to a player's base so that you can warp units in uh, much closer so that they can cover lots of ground very yeah, quickly. Yeah, this is the only reason to put that pylon down right there is so he can warp in units right there in the middle of the battlefield. This will significantly cut off the amount of time it takes the Protoss player to move across the battlefield and we had the tech console up there just a second ago and we saw that the Protoss player was researching charge. This will allow his zealots to move much more quickly while having to catch, hunt down, and destroy those marauders. And looking at the resourcing, we see both players are pretty even in the resourcing, so it looks like it's still a very, very close game. And there's the proxy pylon in operation. You can see all those forces just warped in there out of nowhere. Looks like the Marauders don't want to fight them quite yet. They're going to back up. Hope not to be seen, but they are seen. Now the Stalkers are going to take some damage here from the Marauders, but it looks like the Terran player is really taking a beating. And the, oh, wow. He's pulled one Stalker back, drawing the Marauders' fire, drawing it away from the stack, and the Protoss player wins the battle handily. What an excellent move by the Protoss player. It's really all about controlling units. Getting the most out of the units at this high level of play is what's incredibly important. Now, back at the Terran bases, the Protoss is trying to make a push in there. He does see a couple Marauders out. Oh, he sees, he thinks that he can take that army, but what's this? Two more Marauders show out from behind the Terran's base, and the Protoss army is absolutely overwhelmed. We're going to see those Stalkers just get mauled. Yeah, he would love to escape at this point, but those concussion missiles do slow down units that are hit by them for a short time. It really means that there really was no hope of escape there. All the Protoss could really hold to do at that point was do as much damage as they could before they were taken down. And here is the Protoss response to the Marauder. He's got a bunch of Zealots in play. He's going to warp in a bunch more. These guys are extremely dangerous against the Marauder. The concussion missiles don't do nearly as much, as much damage against lightly armored targets like the Zealot. And it looks like the Zealots might be able to chase down and kill these Marauders. Ooh, and we're going to see those Marauders are hot on the tail of all those Zealots. Whoa, and it's looking like those six Zealots are feeling extremely zealous and are going to move right back in there and try and chase down all those Marauders. we got three more Zealots getting warped into play, and here they go. They're chasing down those three Marauders, only three remaining. Wow, and Charge is finished researching. They are going to be able to chase down the Marauders, no problem. Yeah, there's nowhere to run now, and the Marauders know it. Once that Charge comes online, you can see those blurs oh. by the Zealots as they move so quickly. There's no escape for the Marauders now. They're just running for their lives, trying to escape inside the Terran base, preserve this force as long as he possibly again and the zealots are loose they're loose inside the terran base and they're just trashing the place they're going immediately for the scvs and you can see they're just tearing the place apart killing as many scvs as they can the scvs are turning fighting back desperately trying to stem the loss of life trying to kill as many zealots as they can oh my god he's taking just a terrible beating in his economy the zealots are just cutting into those scvs some zealots are going down but the scvs are taking even worse damage he's down to 25 scvs while the protoss have 33 still in play by the time those zealots leave the base so now, the Protoss player probably thinks that he has this huge one up, but little does he know that the Terran player actually has that high ground expansion where he's able to still safely gather all the minerals he wants. Yeah, absolutely. The Protoss player's got a feeling really confident right now. He just did a terrible amount of damage to his economy. You can see he's already panning across the map there. He was expanding. It looks like the Protoss player's got everything going his way. What he doesn't know, of course, is the Terran does have another town. He has another base, and he's making good use of it. And the Zealots are back inside. They've bypassed that bunker, and they're going directly for the SCVs trying to kill as many as they possibly can. Some of those SCVs are no doubt wounded from the previous battle. The Marines are trying to fight back. The SCVs are trying to get away. 